The mortgage market in America has just collapsed, and home buyers are dropping out like flies, indicating that the 2022 housing crash has already begun. The key evidence of this mortgage market collapse is data collected by the Mortgage Bankers Association, particularly in certain parts of America that are most vulnerable. They track the number of mortgage purchase applications in America each week, which is someone going to buy a home and applying for a loan to do so. This data shows that the index level for mortgage purchase applications of 235 at the end of April is now below the long-term average of 264 over the last five years and is down 17 from where it was just one year ago. This absolute crash in mortgage purchase demand in America is a huge problem because roughly 80% of all homes sold in America, both existing and new, are financed with a mortgage and historically there has been a very tight relationship between mortgage applications and home sales in America. The key difference is that they move almost in lockstep with each other. We can see that mortgage application data is a leading indicator. For example, in December 2021, it started going down through the spring and winter before home sales in America started going down. And you can see that mortgage applications go up before home sales go up and they go down before home sales go down. So to be very clear, this collapse in mortgage applications in the mortgage market is not only signifying weakness in home buyer demand showing up today. It predicts that in the next one to two months, in May and June, we will see fewer buyers and fewer home sales. And of course, fewer buyers means that inventory on the housing market will rise and home prices will fall. But the most important thing for you to remember is that this effect will not be evenly distributed across America. Certain cities are much more likely to experience a housing crash and severe problems in their housing market than others. One side of the equation is home buyer demand, which is proxied by mortgage application data, and the fact that we're seeing fewer home buyers naturally means that inventory will rise. But there's another side to this equation. New listings entering the market. We're seeing a lot of sellers who would be sellers panicking right now. Data from Redfin shows a massive 55-year-over-year -year increase in new listings in the Boys, Idaho housing market, as well as a massive 120-year-over-year -year increase in listings in Nashville and a 70 increase in new listings, new sellers coming to the market in Provo, Utah. And so it's really this double whammy of increased listings and panic sellers coming to the market combined with the decline in demand and mortgage applications. In today's market, the metrics simply do not make sense. According to Redfin data, home prices are at their highest level ever when adjusted for inflation, while the cost of purchasing a home has risen by 40% in the last year. Meanwhile, the average worker's wage in America has only increased by about 5% over the same time period. Clearly, this was never a sustainable situation because, in the long run, the value of a home in America over the last 100 years has been primarily a function of wage inflation. And so, if home prices rise far above inflation and wages, as they did in 2021 and 2022, and as they did in 2006, they will crash, particularly in the western half of the country. I believe that many cities in the Midwest, Northeast, and Deep South will be largely spared from a devastating housing crash in 2022, because they are not as exposed to the technology sector in terms of housing demand. Their housing markets continue to have very low inventory and very low price cuts. We're currently in the first stage of the housing crash, and the mainstream narrative has shifted. Phase 1 includes increased inventory and price cuts. If you're desperate to buy a house, you might take advantage of the first phase of the crash. However, we're about to enter Phase 2 over the next year, which will result in significant long-term home value declines, and so you could buy it now. But if you do, you're likely to lose value on your home over the next few years because historically, it takes a couple years of home price declines before we see a housing market bottom. And then there's stage three of the housing crash, which is when price declines start to moderate, which is happening maybe three or four years into the crash. And all of a sudden, it looks like some growth might be occurring, and you've got to figure out what stage you're in. For more such informative videos, subscribe to our channel and like the video. See you in the next video.